Hey everybody, quick intro here. We had uh, such a good time this week's interview that we went incredibly long, so we decided to split it up into two parts. So, enjoy part one of a two-part interview, very special interview, with Marcus Buff Bagwell. Buff was very cool. He shared a lot of great stories, opinions, and some of the adult stuff that has happened in his life. So, it's not a warning, it's just the way it is. We are four adults having a conversation, so... It was fun, it was cool, and we thank him. Enjoy the show. I want to wrestle you so freaking bad. Wrestle me. Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling, episode 189. With us, we have a very special guest tonight. This episode is entitled The Stuff, because we have WCW and WO legend, Bob fucking Bagwell in the Buff Bagwell, brother, how the fuck are you doing tonight? <laughs> that was the best entrance I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and that beats Michael Buffer, bro. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. You get buff, you get buff, fuck Michael Buffer. You, you know you're over when Michael Buffer is announcing your name, bro. Right. Oh, yeah. That's when you know how was name, that? Bro. How was that? Because WCW used him a hell of a lot. Yeah, it, it was Dude. main event, big fight field. We use him a bunch. He got 10 grand a pop. He got 10 grand every time. We even, I did it. We did a skit one night where I announced Scott Steiner as Michael Buffer. (laughs) And just because we used the words that he says, you know, let's get ready to rumble. I did the whole thing for, for, for the millions, for thousands in attendance and millions around the world. Are you ready? You know, I, I, of course, I had it fucking nailed down to the, to, the, to the T, of course. Don't say it too much, though, Buff. We don't want to get sued. Oh, I forgot about that. Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> the, box, the box are on us. The box. Ten, ten grand we had to pay. Oof. And they came to me with it like like I like maybe I was, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all said, I owe ten grand? I said, I did what y'all told me to do. Uh, so, and they were, no, no, no. We're just, you know, we don't, don't do it no fucking more. <laughs> I said, I said, I, I said, I ain't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't done in the first place. I signed right, third anyway. Right. <laughs> Was he your favorite in WCW? We cut an episode a couple of weeks ago, like the voices of professional wrestling and some of the most iconic voices. And WCW had quite a few. Uh, you know, like Gary Michael Capetta was fucking awesome. I know he kind of goes back to the like the start of your career in WCW, which is actually some of my favorite shit. The Saturday nights, and we'll tear into that yes. in a little bit. Yeah. But who was your favorite uh, guy to, you know, announce your name? What was it? Buffer? I, I think maybe not. <clears throat> yeah, because you, you can't take notoriety and start them away from, from anybody. And, and you knew when Michael Buffer was announcing your name, it, let's just face it, that's a bigger name in the world than Gary Michael mm-hmm. Capetta. Than- yeah. Then all the, uh, you know, uh, who was the country, the country, uh, Rhubarb Jones. <laughs> Rhubarb Jones, <laughs> all right. That was, hey, he announced my very first win against Rip Rogers, which is my very first win on WWE. Hell yeah. And guess right. how he yep. announced my name? He said, the uh, winner of the match is Mark Alexander Bagwell. And I went straight to Dusty's office and I said, bro, Told you I didn't want to be called that, but if you're going to fucking do it, I said, my name's Marcus. And he got so fucking excited. Dusty, <laughs> Dusty went, wait a second. Your fucking name really is Marcus? <laughs> he said, shit. He goes, well, those pretty ass fucking teeth and you be a Marcus Alexander Bagwell. He said, we're going to burn this motherfucker. You got there. Let me get out there. 
And he got there and fucking changed it around and everything, dude. So Dusty always was a big fan of mine. I was a huge fan of his, of course. He's Dusty fucking Rhodes fan. I mean, he's super talent, great guy. And I got the opportunity and privilege to be hired by him, you know. And uh, so it was um, – so I, th- I think to answer your question, Bumper was the best just because of he was a bigger star. So when you heard, you know, you know Michael Buffer announcing you in Las Vegas, Nevada – Oh, yeah. I mean, how much bigger does it get? You know, yeah. No, no, for sure. It's that thousands of attendants and millions around the world. Are you ready? In the millions watching (laughs) at home. I'd forget what to do because I'd be in awe. I'd be, I'd have my chills, hair stand up in the back of the neck. Buff. It's, you know what's (laughs) fucked up about it? No, though, now, though, guys, is his brother is bigger than he is. Yeah, Yeah, right. I didn't know this. His brother is really who thought of it. Really? I didn't wow. Know that too recently. No, that was never mentioned during mm. the heyday of WCW that there was right. a brother, that there was he only got over when the the you know the the NMA shit got over. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and really he supposedly is the brains behind the whole fucking thing, you know. And I didn't know that. That was never mentioned to us. We always thought it was, you know, Michael Buffer. You right. Know, I always thought he was like the bootleg Michael Buffer. I didn't know he was like the brains. <laughs> like, Here comes the Aldi, the Aldi brand yeah, Michael Buffer. Brains. Every wrestler would answer what I'm saying the same what you just said. We kind of thought that he was, even when I watched him on MMA, mm-hmm. I thought he was the knockoff version of what his brother had created, Michael. And really, it's the fucking other way around. That's crazy. Which is nuts. Speaking well, of like early shit and talking to Dusty, didn't miss did missy hyatt have a hand in bringing you in the wcw she created me bro really elaborate she she allowed here's what happened i'm a i'm a licensed massage therapist a legal licensed massage therapist i went to the atlanta school massage when i was 18 years old when my family was going broke my dad came to us he had 100 grand and he said i got a hundred thousand dollars to get you guys into, into something. This is coming from a family that was making a million dollars a month with a lumber business. <clears throat> I had every fucking motorcycle, four-wheeler. Do you remember those things called Odysseys? There was like a dune bus. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, My buddy I, actually I, has one. <laughs> let's just say I never spent the night nowhere because all the toys were at my house. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. My house, you know, because I had all the shit. <clears throat> so... Long story short, he's going broke. We do the fucking deal. And uh, he says, this is what I got. So my oldest brother picked a gym. He wanted a gym. My second, my middle brother picked um, drywall. He opened Bagel Drywall. And I'm 18, bro. What, what, the, what, the, what the fuck would you say at 18? Let me tell you what I said. I go, I don't know what I fucking want to do. I would say that. I, I was <laughs> yep. baseball. Waiting to come to the lumber yard till these motherfuckers <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> my, older brother, my two older brothers fucked it up for me. Yeah. And uh and it's the truth. And uh so I mean, you know, they 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 don't think it is, but I watched it as a kid. They were fucking racing motorcycles, paying people to eat, you know, roaches, paying people to burn them with their sewing cigarette, just crazy <laughs> shit, man. I watched as a kid. My brothers were just maniacs. And what would happen is all the dudes would go to them and fucking and get them to come to my mom bitching and griping. So really all they did was cause my mom to fucking sway back to the store going under because of that reason. I picked, what can I do? You know, that my sports related maybe eventually. So you got massage therapy somehow hit me because I always would massage the girl's necks. And my mom or dad. Amongst other things. And I was really good at it, uh, even as a kid. And so I, for a shoot, took it on. And this was at a time when it was a little bit iffy on the masseuse word. And that was kind of, you know, tossed away. And massage therapist was the way they were going to say massage massage therapy. So the problem with massage therapy is I think – I'm seeing these ugly, nerdy, ugly people that are massage therapists that are making cash. And I'm thinking, 
I'm going to fucking, I'm going to load up, bro. A good looking guy, good Southern boy, good manners, good guy, good kid. Got looks, in shape, nutritionist diet, all that. I said, I'm in. Let's do, let's do, let's do the massage therapy thing. So I go 10 months. I graduate number one in my class. I get the top job. It was called, uh, um, I can't remember the damn name now, but it was all the main uh, gyms, the Buckhead Athletic Club, the Dunwoody Athletic Club, all the athletic clubs. They weren't called fitness places. They were athletic clubs. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Now, all the older people kind of trained and the money trained. Every fucking woman that fucking walked in and saw me turned directly the fuck around and walked directly the fuck out. And I was like, what the fuck, man? Intimidated. I started, yeah. I finally started asking, and that was the word. They said that they because they probably do the buff, they probably walked in and got sopping wet looking at you. Oh, then, yeah. You know, am I supposed to cheat on my husband? Because if I go in, I sure as hell am. I am costing this place mops. It, it only happened once. <laughs> and, and it was this older chick. And her husband was right outside the door working out. And I remember massaging her. Working out, right? Yeah, right. And I'm massaging the chick's leg. And as I'm massaging her, I get a little closer and a little closer. To, and she kind of props her ass up a little bit. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I kind of just, just rake rake her a little bit. And then she comes up a little bit more. And I rake her a little more. And then finally, a little finger. And all of a sudden, we're, <laughs> in, we're in it, brother. Oops. We, we open the door for her. Get it door. To I shake her husband's hand goodbye and wish him a happy trip to, and hope to Hawaii, you know. Goodbye. But most of the women really said, you know, hey, my husband would kill me. I may have a bump on my back. Um, you may see some fat on me. So it was really the exact opposite of what I hoped. And I was digging so hard for it. Right. For, for it to work because you know, I really thought I was actually really good at it. I was really a great massage therapist for real. And, and so I'm at the pool one day depressed because that's not going my way. Don't know what, the, what my next move is. And I see this blonde haired chick across the pool that was a fucking knockout and, and she's with an agent that don't know I'm married. And Missy, of course, don't even know me. She just sees this good looking dude across the pool. And she goes, who the fuck is that over there? And the lady's like, I I don't I'm not sure. And she goes, move me wherever the fuck he lives. The closest you can move me to that guy. So I come back from the pool that day and she's fucking moving in directly across. I, I can remember our room numbers. I would, I don't ask me fucking how. I just got a great memory. I was room 1504 and she was 1505. And this is when she was still married to Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. And yeah. so <clears throat> I come walking up and anybody, if I was, maybe if I was older than 18, I'd been smart enough. I was like, that's kind of weird. She's moving in right next door to me. And, well, so I go in my room, you know, my home, my, my apartment, closed door. Well, that night she knocks on the door. And she goes, hi, my name is Missy. Do you mind if I come in for a minute? He's like, no, sure, come on in, you know. <laughs> and I told Tanya, my wife, I said, hey, that's, this, is, this is the girl I told you I saw. And he's like, you know, I was open about everything. I was like, man, I saw this fucking knockout of the pool today, you know. So she's like, well, my name's Missy Hyatt. I work for WCW. And. She goes, you guys ever jump? And, and we, 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 unfortunately, we said the same thing I've heard a thousand times that I hate to hear, but I said out of my own mouth, which is, uh, well, we watched it as a kid, you know, and, and we don't watch it much anymore. Same thing I've heard a million times. I actually yeah. Well. yeah. And she goes, well, <clears throat> I said, those fucking guys, she goes, your, she goes, your husband should be a fucking wrestler. She goes, are you, a, are you an athlete? I said, I was all county, all state in football and baseball. And I said, uh, I said, so, but I mean, that don't, I, Rick Flair can't throw a fucking football. Rick Flair can't, <laughs> throw, can't throw a baseball either. <laughs> that, he can chop them sons of bitches. That motherfucker's one of the best wrestlers in the world. So yeah. I, I knew that there was more to the game 
than just being an athlete, obviously by looking at it just alone. And then when you get involved in it, you really find out. So she says, you know, I said, I said, those guys don't make no fucking money. And she goes, our lowest paid guy makes about a hundred grand a year. And I said, tell me the story one more time. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, go, let's, let's go over that one more time so we can get out yeah. So we line up for me to go down. So I actually go down to where Sarge, Buddy Lee Parker's at. Yeah, Buddy Lee Parker, man. That yeah. dude's brick yeah. shit house. And Nick Patrick's dead. And um, and we're down there, and there's nobody there but Kevin Nash, a black dude that I can't remember who was he, he didn't ever be he wasn't nobody for us anyway. And right. and, and Sarge was in the ring with him, and they were fucking whispering and shit. And I'm going, the fuck are they whispering? Are they, are they fucking talking about me or something? <laughs> so Finally, Sarge comes out to talk to me, and he goes, because um, Missy had Missy set up me to go down there. It was down in Griffin. Mm. There wasn't no power plant and all that shit. There wasn't none of that. There was an old there was an old ring and an old warehouse, and you had to fucking know somebody. And, yeah. you, had to, and you had to have $3,000. That's what they charged, $3,000. And I came back to Missy. I said, I ain't got $3,000. I said, I, I don't know anybody that does. Uh, I said, but... Um, I said, so let me just, you know, she goes, well, let me try to find somebody else. So she found Steve the Brawler Lawler. But during the SARS thing, I said, Missy, I go, they were whispering about me and stuff. And she goes, started laughing. She goes, they were calling spots. And this one, K Faye was still, I mean, think about it. I'm yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 1990, bro. And still a lot. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, K Faye was huge. And, and so, you know, she goes, oh, baby, they were, they were just calling spots and didn't want you to know what they were doing, you know. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't quite understand. But so she sets me up with Steve the Brawler Lawler to get to train me. He literally, if you call this being trained, he literally trained me about five times, maybe mm. five sessions for $1,500. The fifth one, he goes, dude, you're you're a fucking natural at this. I mean, to the point of today, all I'd have to say for somebody to get in this business is run the ropes for me. And no matter what their comeback is, I'd say, do me a favor and just run the ropes for me. And how they run the ropes, I can tell you if they can make it or fucking not. That's why I've never had a school, can't have a school. So I'm gonna be honest with him and say, look, bro, you fucking suck. <laughs> and you need to go another route. Because uh, yes, threaten. This is not the right route you're going. Um, so you need to find something else in life to want to want to be because you this you, you can't do this. And because you gotta use you, it's it's not because I'm in this business, it's just so many different avenues of things you gotta have in this business to to have the it factor it takes to be a right. professional. You gotta have looks, you gotta have a good mouth, you gotta, you gotta have a great memory. I mean, bro, in Japan, the finishes were like a page long. And you oh. had to remember all that shit because if you got off track there, they speak Japanese and you speak English, and there's nobody that can fucking help you. You shit out of love, bro. Yep. So you gotta have a great memory. You gotta have swag. You gotta have charisma. You gotta have a combination of all of it, like Stone Cold or The Rock. That would be the people I would judge my career trying to follow or be. It's like The Rock, Ric Flair, Rick Rude. Your stings, your Lugers. Love fucking Rick Rude, dude. Yep. God damn, I love Rick Rude. That's where I got my finish from. It was, you know, he did the, remember the Rude Awakening? Yes. Neck breaker. Well, if you remember when I joined the NWO, I did the Rude Awakening on on Riggs, but I wanted to come up with something so it wasn't totally copying copying his move. So I came off of it with, yeah, came off the ropes and doing it. Yeah. And it came, and Disco Inferno named it the Blockbuster. And now the guys that, now it's, now it's getting used as a move. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They yep. call the blockbuster, you know. They ain't about to call it the fucking blockbuster. 
<laughs> I'm about to put that motherfucker over. <laughs> but they know, they know, everybody there knows what they're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so she really had an intricate part of all of, of me making it because she goes, she goes, listen to me closely. She goes, they're going to hate your fucking guts. Mm. She goes, you're good looking. I go, why? She goes, because you're good looking. You got everything it takes. You're, you're, they know you're going to make it. All you got, but they're going to test you and push you. And Steve Austin dumped ice water on my fucking head at center stage. Oh. 30 times by exaggeration. 30 times, bro. Oh. A lot of fucking times. <laughs> and I wanted to see a pissed off motherfucker come out of that bathroom. And instead they saw Marcus Alexander battle come out going. <laughs> This fucking stone. I was, I was just, I was as cold as ice as he was, you know. And they were like, "Damn," you know. And they just kept trying to piss me off. And, and after a while, they figured out that the little boy in the corner that they thought was a nobody that had never been nowhere, ain't didn't know what jail was or knocking somebody out, had knocked more people out than the whole fucking locker room. <laughs> had been in jail more in the whole fucking locker room and was cooler than most of the fucking locker room. <laughs> yeah. I, had sit, I had to sit there like I was, you know, Marcus, you know, Marcus, I was in the bag. Well, hey, what's up? <laughs> so I played my part long enough till finally Steen saw through the real Marcus Bagel. Yeah. The buff, let's say the buff Bagel guy. And he saw that. And so he loved me, but nobody else got it. They were like, what the fuck, man? Are you hanging out that back old guy for? So that's where Missy, back to the Missy side part of it, that's who prepared me for all of those things. And she was so good at telling me about it that I remember being in Global right before I went to w WCW. I yeah. Was global was the handsome stranger. Yeah. 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 I remember that. About a month before me and Eddie Gilbert wrestled, I was at my apartment where Missy lived across from me and her and Eddie were going through a divorce. So they were fighting and they're fucking fighting over my barbecue grill. Now I'm not sure exactly if y'all remember this or not, but barbecue grill is a big fucking deal today. And it was a gigantic deal in 19 fucking 89, 1990 to have a gas yeah. fucking grill. Oh yeah. You didn't see, especially down South, man. Exactly. So they're fighting over my gas grill and they've even got the utensils like in between the door and they fucking break. I look out my eye hole and I've got a fucking pink G string on and a Colt 45 stainless steel 45 automatic in my hand. <laughs> I look at the door and I go, hey, motherfucker. And Eddie Gilbert turns around and I go, I have to switch hands. I go, hey, hey, Eddie, how you doing, man? Yeah. Nice to meet you, bro. <laughs> In a fucking pink G string. Yeah. So a month later, the handsome stranger is going against hot stuff Eddie Gilbert for the GWF title. And I gotta walk up to him and go, hey bro, are are we cool about that pull my gun on you thing? <laughs> oh. So he was like, Yeah, man. I, I said, bro, I said, fuck, I didn't know it was gonna be here a month later. You know, I didn't know all this was going to come down to actually me and you wrestling. But um, that's when Missy was, she was uh, messing around with that Atlanta Falcon guy. That was, he was, he had a little short stint at WWF. And, um, but he, Eddie had caught her over there with him and, um, or he got him over there with her. And uh, the cops came and arrested Eddie and all that shit. But, uh, but I said a month later, I'd go and say, hey man, are we, we're cool that gun thing, ain't we? Are we good? He goes, oh, yeah, man, shit, that's cool. I said, okay, bro. So um, so Missy played a very intricate part to, to my career. And, you know, it ain't like she had stroke to help me get a job by no means. Right, um, right. Uh, but she definitely had the the right things to tell me to make it in this in the in the business. Especially oh, yeah. a good-looking kid's point of view that I didn't know. 
And, and so she was able to tell me, look, this is what's going to come at you. This is what you got to do. She was very, very great about me having a long as of a career as I've had with this. And I, I thank her every time I see her and love her to death. And that's great, man. Cause you, especially, you know, brother, back in the day, dude, like the wrestling business is blown wide the fuck open. No, nobody even knows what kayfabe is anymore, you know? know um, yeah. So to be able to prepare you, because a lot of it is, you know, mentally can really beat a person down that has aspirations of being in the business and thinks you have to, it takes a certain individual and you're talking about, you know, like guys like Austin, you know, dumping the ice and shit on you and kind of like hazing you. They did that shit because the business was so protected. They wanted to see like, how much can this guy take? Is he really cut out for this shit? Oh, yeah. You know, like, so that was awesome of her to fucking, you know, kind of prep you, man, and let you know, like, dude, this is what it's going to be. If you can't yeah, handle she, it, you know, she, she, and she fucking nailed it is the best part. And it really, I mean, even as I just told the story, because I saw Missy over the WrestleCon, we wrestled, you know, Mania. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've always thanked her and praised her and all that. But, I mean, dude, I mean, she really, the more I talked even right then and the more you said it back to me, she played such an integral part of, 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 of my life, of me lasting. Dude, Cowboy Bill Watts would have Hell fired yeah. me in 30 fucking seconds. But good old Buff, more excuse me, Marcus Alexander Bagwell, good old Marcus, guess who his best friend was? Eric Who's Watt. that? Missy Hyatt? Eric Watts. Eric, Eric Watts. Oh, cow. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yep. I was him, bro. I dodged another yeah. bullet. And every one of them fucking bullets I dodged, which was five bosses, bro, I survived. Damn. Every time somebody came to us, they'd go, right. you're still here? And I'd be like, shh. Get <laughs> 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 the fuck up, man. Don't yell that shit out. They, I, maybe I just eat by here. And so. Sounds like me sneaking into wrestling shows. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you, it's like, man, she's easy, bro. Easy. So, yeah, but uh, I, I dodged that one because of, of being friends with, with Eric. And me and Eric were, for real, like, best friends for several years. And I still love Eric. Fuck yeah. Eric's a good kid and good guy. And he's a, I think he's a few years older than me, but we're close, real close to the same age. And, you know, we was, we was up against each other for, for, for Rookie of the Year. And he won PWI, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But I won WCWs, which back then that was, you know, to the wrestlers, PWI was was bigger, but to the world, WCW Rookie of the Year was, of course, bigger. Mm -hmm. Overall, we were on TV. The PWI, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. The rookie Dude. of the Year for WCW was the fuck way to go. And you know who the third person against me was? Who was that? Dallas fucking Page. <laughs> really? Wow. What a strange world we live in, exactly. bro. Exactly. Like, 15 years older than me, and he's going up against me for rookie of the year. I'm like, if this fucking old motherfucker beats me, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Keep it down. You're in his house. I know, no, but we knew we knew each other. So he, we fell in love with we fell in love with each other directly, bro, because we saw each other the same way, like fans and stuff. Like I have never, ever, ever turned down an autograph in my life, and neither has he. And Fuck we yeah. saw the same, we saw the same base with that kind of thing. And we instantly got along because of that. So he's always, and like, and when he really started getting over one time, he's told this story before, but he started getting over to the point of like, instead of hearing sting, 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 and people going, woo, woo. Yeah. The first time in my life, I was getting dressed on the stage and I heard a DDP chant going on. And I fucking raised up and I went, hold her hand. Nobody did nothing. And I just kind of looked and took it in for a minute. And I went straight to Dallas. And this is when he, I really sold him as being straight up and a good friend. Right. I went straight to him and I was like, Can you come in? I said, Come in for a minute, bro. And he was up like in the A locker room. And I always kind of dressed in the B, C locker room, you know, just it was just easier. It was not any people. It was just, it was just better. Less he goes. A lot, a lot less. Yeah, watch this a lot less and all that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, but he was right. He was a and all that. So he comes down, and plus that was up steps. I, I was like, why the fuck? I mean, I'll, I'll just fly fucking here, man, right in the middle of all this shit. 
I don't feel like going up my stairs. So <laughs> yeah, I'm right. going up my stairs, I go. Fuck <clears throat> them steps. I said, fuck them steps. I said, listen, I said, listen to that, bro. He went, what? I said, just listen. And we heard you, D, D, P. I said, bro, I said, I've been here longer than everybody. I said, I said, I ain't never another chant besides Sting or Woo. I said, ever in my life. I said, I just want to tell And so he tells that story to this day, and it's a shoot. And it was in South Carolina, like Shrine Mosque, South Carolina. And, uh, and he, he, uh, we roomed together that night, ironically. We get back in the fucking room. This motherfucker's got ice packs on every fucking thing that bends in the world. <laughs> well, I mean, he started, what? He was like late 30s when he started. I think it was 37 when he started. Yeah. You know? Like Batista. Well, so yeah. I, was, I was 20, so yeah, it yeah, had to be. I mean, with, with the managing part of it and all that, because he's... He just turned 66, I think. So I'm 52 is, you know, 14 years. So 14 years on me, bro. That's 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 a lot, you know. And um, that motherfucker made it through all that with, and I mean, he sent a video camera to video his matches, and every top guy in the fucking locker room would fuck with his camera, cut some kind of video showing their dick or their ass or something. <laughs> <laughs> but he asked and I'm getting ready to go to the fucking club yeah he goes do you fucking ever hurt and I go no why he goes he goes god I hate your fucking guts <laughs> and I said I said bro what the fuck and, and then we talked about that the other day how now he's put together still and feels great and I'm fucking walking around with the crutch I'm like, <laughs> so know, Buff so you're fucking- going going up to Dally and like you're like hey <laughs> Do you yeah. ever hurt? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, hey, so DDPY is right here with me, brother. I'm telling you, it's a fucking shoot, bro. It's a real deal. Uh, I mean, I can't. It's not magic, but it's the next. It's the next closest thing to a magic trick that I've ever seen in my life. Don't get me wrong. You got to put the time in. You got to do it. Um, That's with anything. Time, but, oh. it's fucking, it's off the chain uh, on, on 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 the results and. <laughs> It speaks for itself. There's video, there's proofs, there's look at Jake, eight years sober now. You know, I mean, he bought Scott 10 years. You know that, you know, he bought Scott. Yeah. 10 years, you know, Fuck. That's yeah. still kicking my ass, dude. The, you know, that we just lost him. I mean, yeah. I didn't know him personally, but you know how it is as a fan. We, he fucking raised us. You know, he, we grew yeah. up with Razor, with Scott Hall. He's a part of the most pivotal moments that changed wrestling forever and for the fucking better. You know, without and him and Kevin, and there's none of these guaranteed contracts. And he will continue doing that. Yes. Yes. He's not like Elvis, he's going to continue making money <clears throat> and making money for other people from being being six feet under, bro. He's still Scott fucking Hall, man. And do you, I mean, do you, have you ever really seen some fucking old pictures of him, bro? Dude, when yeah. he was in AWA, yes. when he was big Scott Hall. With the mustache, with the caterpillar. Team yeah. with Rick Steiner and with, shit. With, with, with the fucking Magnum TA. The porn stash. Kurt Hennig. Yeah, oh, dude. Yes. Dallas Page is who changed all of that. Dallas Page is who came up with the whole thing. The toothpick flipping, all that shit oh, Dallas came up with. That was money. And they told me, he told the story the other day on how that came up. They did something where they were going to do something with a toothpick. Mm-hmm. And somehow Dallas is, everybody's fell out, but Scott Hall's. And, and Dallas is like, bro, that's the deal. You got the toothpick and you flick it at the fucking camera. That's the deal, man. So, so, so you got to shave his mustache, dye his hair black. He got the Magnum thing gone. All of a sudden, you had the fucking diamond stud. Loved it. Loved mm-hmm. it, dude. And the next thing you had was fucking Razor Ramon. Bro. Yeah. I mean, Razor fucking Ramon. How's the shit? I need to get more over hey. than that, bro. Hey, yo. I probably just scarred yeah. her heart hey, for yo. life, right? Yeah. Hey, yo, so Chico. Said, this shit like for life and the the too sweet, they created Turkish wolf. That shit. We yep. just came in and did it with them to be cool and to help it out. But they, him and Kevin, created all that shit, man. A culture. They created yeah. a culture, dude. And it to Moving. this day, yeah. you know. And 
dude, you're still a part of that. And we're going to tear into that in a second. But, I, I, you know, as we're going, I still want to keep on because, like I said, dude, as a kid growing up, I loved uh, – and actually, I want to kind of jump into this. So you and Scotty Riggs, Riggs, uh, American. dude, the American fucking male. Yes. You know, I, I talked to you the other day, and I was like, dude, I still rock that theme song, and that's a fucking yeah. shoot, dude. <laughs> hey, bro, you can hit up my have iTunes. You ever, have you ever actually seen the American male video? Yeah, I watch. I I posted it. I think on Twitter at uh, Just Pro Podcast today. It yeah, was, the promo. It's it the black really, and white really, one. It was really a good video, dude. Dude, it reminded me of Classic. what's like an early '90s, like Showtime Absolutely. late black night show or so. Me on the Harley for a glimpse. Yes, on the football. Uh, yeah, you know, walking to the, the museum. We went, was at the Atlanta Arts Museum. Shirts I mean, off, was, fucking. Yep. Glistening I, like it's some red now, shoe diary how, shit. How that how that came up was I went to him with an idea that this was not just heels anymore. Yeah. Where or a pussy. And a dangly, <laughs> yeah, and a dangly earring and and it'd be fucking a baby face and it'd be cool. Mm. And they're like, You've lost your fucking mind, bro. That that that's not a good idea. That sucks. And da 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 da. Two days, I saw I shave my goatee off. Two days later, Terry Taylor calls me up and goes, "Hey, uh, you still got your goatee?" I said, "No, I just shaved it off." He goes, <laughs> "I lost it." He said, "Well, how long will it take you to grow it back?" And if you really not saying that I had not saying I had anything to do with the NWO creating it or anything, if you really think about it, I saw something that was coming that came, which was. We tried to make the NWO bad, and we were good guys. The American yeah. males had dangly earrings, chokers, everything to make you fucking hate us, and we were baby faces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys were like male strippers. That's what the vibe I got, and I was like, we were cool male strippers. Why do I like these guys? I'm right? a little boy, though. <laughs> Some of the dudes liked, and all the girls liked, but you'd get a few boozed. Buff just kind of filled in the gaps of that. Yeah. I gotta, I'm gonna be honest with you, not to cut you off, but real quick. So, uh, this is a fucking shoot. Yesterday, I met my two year old son. Um, no, it wasn't his birthday party. We were at a family birthday party at a local pizza place. And I'm, uh, dude, I'm looking up, I'm trying to create the graphic for this episode, and I'm pulling up shit of you, and I'm watching that video. And my old lady's dad comes and says, Oh, there's Justin looking at his muscle, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2022, it. man. Come on. <laughs> Look at his muscle, man. But, I'm like, you know what this is? <laughs> yes, absolutely. But there's the truth, bro. It was a fucking, I mean, I, I showed him that. I said, Look, it can be, you know, and then ironically, what came after the American Mills, the NWO. So yeah. we tried to wear black to make us bad. We tried to do the mustaches and, the, you know, Everything I did just got me more over. Do you know what this motherfucker right here went through? I mean, this motherfucker, <laughs> I this top hat right here, it got annihilated in, in the locker room. Oh, I mean, fucking annihilated. And then now you got a face on top. Yeah. <laughs> that was my mom's idea. And Who did the airbrushing? You got me going out on TV going, Look, there's two of us. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave me such a fucking prop that's on fucking action figures, bro. That yeah. leaves a dent in this fucking business. And let me tell you something, bro. If you leave a dent in this business, you've done something. You live my forever. Fucking, you live forever. It's on a Capital One fucking credit card. <laughs> I mean, how many motherfuckers you know that can say that? Yeah. Not many. Not bro. many. Not many. Try Mm-mm. fucking zero, because who the fuck are we yet? Not that. I love y'all, but it does show like an unbelievable. I and mean, I remember doing the commercial, like, and it would always they always show the commercial before the fucking show, and mm-hmm. every motherfucking wrestler would be like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I was like, God damn, dude, I just cut the commercial. Like, they asked me to do, bro. Fuck. <laughs> you know, and I'm over there, I'm over there going, I got my WC Democratic R, you know, all that shit. And I'm like, and there's getting tons of heat for it, you know? Oh, man. And I'm like, hey, like, jealousy. Yeah, that's what we called it in Marietta. And wrestling, they called it heat. Yeah. And Marietta fucking oh, yeah. Jr., they called that jealousy. 
Yeah. Hey, imagine me rolling up in 1985 and 15 in a fucking court red Corvette to school <laughs> with a driver's license at 15 and a fucking parking place. And I'm rolling up way, Principles past, <laughs> way past home room. You know that. Mm-hmm. I walk up to the fucking desk where you got to sign in and I, I reach through the window where there's a cut off glass. I reach through the window to get a piece of paper and I write, Marcus didn't feel good this morning, Judy Bagwell. And they watched me sign it and knew if they called the number that Judy Bagwell was going to go. Yeah, he didn't feel well this morning. No matter what they came up with, she was going to agree with it. And they knew it. And so homeroom didn't, our homeroom, I don't know how you guys went to school, but our homeroom in the ninth grade, we had the same homeroom, 10th, 11th, and 12th. So those motherfuckers had to put up with me for four straight fucking years. <laughs> they didn't see me a lot. <laughs> I waited for homeroom to get kind of done. And 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 they all all the all the kids went to school knew that. So my senior class kind of had enough of buff, so, <laughs> so to speak. But the junior sophomores and freshmen, motherfucker, that pussy was all over me. Yeah. <laughs> and but the seniors were kind of like they were kind of over. They had seen they had put up with my ass so much. They were like. Oh my God, we uh, we got we okay. You're fucking good looking. You're cool. We love it. <laughs> please, please don't come to homeroom. Uh, and, and I come strutting in the homeroom. Swear to God on my life. Every once in a while, I would trade. I I I I I'd surprise the homeroom and show up. And <laughs> one of my favorite outfits I rocked back in the day was fucking overalls. Believe it or not. But you left one it. side undone. Yeah, that was the style. I remember <laughs> that shit. Guess what color my fucking sh- shoes were? Red? Pink. Pink? Yes. Oh! Pink What's Reebok the pink for? With a pink shirt on. And oh. rocking it, bro. Yeah, rocking yeah. It. And, and see, nobody would do that shit. Nobody had that kind of vision or anything. They were... They were like, well, you're the craziest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Of course, somebody from Southeastern Building Supply, which named our, my mom's named our, named our lumber company, somebody from Southeastern would pull up with McDonald's for me to eat lunch. Everybody else is eating fucking shitty ass lunch food. My, me and my, a few of my friends would get McDonald's. Shit on a shingle, just like in the joint. <laughs> yeah, right. What, three, three hots in a cot, you know? Right, right. <laughs> I've been there. Me too. But, but yeah, they, sucks. Uh, they uh, um, you know, it was just, and he literally, I had like, there was one row around the lunch table and then you had your second row and then you even had your third row. And that's how you judged kind of popularity. And it right. wasn't on purpose or anything. It was just who's, who, who wants to sit at the cool table and who, who wants to talk the cool shit, you know? Yeah. And who wants to get fucked up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who wants to get fucked up and party? Who wants McDonald's chicken nuggets? I who do. Wants to sit in the fucking right seat? now. Who wants to sit in the Corvette seat? Yeah. <laughs> There's only one seat there, bro. I can have somebody <laughs> with me. Can you imagine, motherfucker? I, I had fucking fighting for that position, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. And it was fun, dude. We come rocking in always late, and the kids would all be in the windows. And I all, back then, we had all the, the best thing we had was cassettes. Mm-hmm. I was just getting what? to that. What were you rocking musically back then? The tubes, one in a million. Bad company. <laughs> Bad company. Bad company. Fuck yeah. Uh, Fuck Boston. Yeah. Yes. Fucking yes. love Boston. Boston. Bad company. Leonard Skinner. Um, oh my god, the hits. But of course, Bon Jovi. You know, Bon Jovi was right. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to cut you off with the Bon Jovi buff. I love you, but get the fuck out of here with Bon Jovi. <laughs> god damn it! God, can you just kill it. You don't like Bon Jovi? I'm not a big Bon Jovi, but hey, oh, I'm not a man. hater. If you enjoy it, then I enjoy that Dude, you enjoy it. A chance or something, man. I mean, he really. I did. Not. I saw Vampires Two, Dia de la bullshit, and it sucked. <laughs> Vampires Two, the movie. Yeah, was he that? was in Vampires Two. Remember the original John Carpenter's Vampires movie? Yeah, he was in the second one. It was. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Fucking wrong. No, it was. It was from Dust Till Dawn Two. 
I think. Okay. Okay. Now, now, yeah. There you go. Now, yeah. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. You know, <laughs> he, was also, hour, man. he was also in Pay It Forward. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. He's he also on my father. shit list. He was, he was my father. <laughs> he was my father. He was the father of the kid. And I, I got 10 grand for that movie for, um, if you remember Helen Hunt, every time she talks to her son, my, mm. I, my baseball tenant, uh, what do you call those uh, baseball? Uh, pennant, pennant. Yeah, the pennants. Yeah, yeah. Pennant flags. I remember those. Yeah. Our buff Bagel pennant is right there every time she talks to her son. I remember that. He's supposedly yeah. a shoot fan of wrestling. If you remember one scene, he's wrestling, he's sitting with Bon Jovi, his father, in the movie. And I think Billy Kidman and the Nasty Boys are on TV. It's like a nitro show. Fuck yeah. And so he was a huge, and if you look close in the movie, Goldberg is behind his head, but hmm. I got the main fucking scene, bro, of yes. him in the talk. So I got to get seen like three or four times and, and got paid for it. They're like, here, you got to, you got to sign that. So they said, for what? They go, well, do you want 10 grand? I go, yeah. Yeah. And they go, well, all you can do is sign here and let them show your likeness. I was like, give me that motherfucker. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and you say, so yeah, I hate that that Jews. I'm sorry, man. We didn't see eye to eye on that moment. But Joby's, you can I tell you, be honest, to be totally honest with you, do you realize that motherfucker has managed to stay married to the same fucking woman? That's respect. Time? I'll give him respect for that. I give him something. For I'm that. tired of people just oh, yeah. giving up and saying fuck it and After we're getting four divorced years. and kids yeah. suffer from that shit Bro, and all that, you know. I've divorced the same woman twice, bro. Yeah, hey, I mean, at just, least you gave it two shots. Third, you know, shame on me. How, how many motherfuckers you know got four divorces and they divorced their wife all four times? Holy shit. Somewhere shit. along the line, you know, one of those bitches left the guy. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Not with me, brother. I'm four for four on deciding what my fucking future was like. Yeah, now, I fucked up the third. I thought you were just a big Ric Flair fan doing that yeah, shit, yeah. you know, all in my fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, it is. Yes. <laughs> did I just hear someone talk about the horseman? I can't do it like Jay Lethal does, but you get there. Right? I swear it was, uh, that was, that was like a big, remember the time we imitated them? And, oh, and dude, Jay yeah. Came out with Classic. The power foam cooler was in my car that Kevin came out with as they were owner. salty about that too. I got major, I got heat for that. Really? Oh. I got heat because it was my cooler and my idea. And that hey that got a that stirred up a big pot, bro. Oh when I opened the fucking when I opened the door and I, I actually saw Kevin and saw Scott Hall. I mean saw X Pac. I just went, oh uh, this this is this is bad. <laughs> bro, we're, from, we're fucking with that, which was a big fucking deal, bro. I mean, oh, there yeah, some, still is, still is. Rough, some feathers got ruffled, and, and it was rough, but it was good shit. It was some of the best shit Xbox ever done in his life. That was great. He it was entertaining. A, he had a tube going down his arm that we could squeeze for his tears. <laughs> no shit. That's how. That's how. I remember he kept crying. Yeah. Rick always gets keeping Kate so alive. I love him to death for it. I'm a huge. I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the biggest Ric Flair fans in the world. Who? Ain't. <clears throat> right. But X Pac did a great job on that, bro. And uh, you got to give it to him, man. It, it was beautiful. And you know, I did the fucking toss. If you watch, if you watch that over ever, I do the Kurt Henning toss to towel behind my back. And I'm on the stage, I'm on the ramp coming down, and I barely catch that motherfucker, bro. <laughs> That's the kind of shit that made us who we were, bro. It was yep. fucking good shit and pulls it off without fucking up, you know? And that's, that's a professional. Life, brother, this shit was live. If you fucking trip and fall, you tripped and fall. <laughs> mm hmm. Well, if I trip, then I'm tripping. I'm tripping. That's how you recover. That's, that's what I told them. They got, remember when the, we finally got the, the new WCW emblem? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan of that one. It was a little weird. Nobody's everybody hated that one. Everybody for a long time. I, this is the shoot right here. I didn't know it said WCW. I was like, what the fuck is this? I, I didn't pointy- even- I didn't, it looks like it looks like it looks like a spaceship or something. Yeah, I, dude, yes. it remind me of Fly the Navigator. Yes, it yes, did. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. good, good example. Very good. And, and so anyway, when we got it, they put it on the ramp, and it was kind of slick. So we're, we're we're fucking playing cards, you know, back in the back, you know, stinging some beers where we can and drinking and partying too, and um, doing doing all that. And uh, and Eric Bischoff comes in and goes, "Hey, you guys may want to go out look at the new emblem." Um, it's real slick. I don't want you guys to trip a ball or something on it. So I need you guys, you know, guys, man, about look, the whole fucking locker room gets up and walks out to go look at it. Yeah. Except who? And <laughs> probably Hogan. You, I was going to say you, the whole NWR. Well, he was in his own locker room, so I can't speak for him. Right, <laughs> right. We only went there. Right I for figured he would have been like, I'm he, good, brother. Who was like, Coors Light and a bowl over and a big pan over here, pain pills over here. It was just party time and, and Hulk's locker room. And he was the coolest motherfucker, no matter who. Really? He, yes. I mean, everything I ever saw in my life for Hulk is a thumbs up. And he fucking, he was, he was, he was the shit. I mean, he, he gets shit on a lot cool. nowadays, especially since, you know, certain situations happen, which I want to yeah. get into. And it sucks because. You look at the guy who is, he's still, in my mind, the Babe Ruth of pro wrestling, you know? I mean, Gotta get nobody would have been where they were at if it wasn't uh, for it. what him and Vince did in the 80s, you know? like Gotta, And even Vern Gagne, because he was right. Hulk, Hulkamania was birthed in the AWA, you know? Well, when he came out, keep in mind, there was only two motherfuckers that could do what needed to be done to change the history of wrestling, which is what the NWO did. And do you know the second? Hulk and who? For as far as the NWO is concerned? Or as the baby face that turns heel is going to shock the world. Oh, this is, there's a couple of man, Hogan was really the only sting. Boom. Yep. My boy juice. <laughs> hey, they went to Sting first. Yeah. And he said no. And I don't know. I, can I see that. don't know how he feels about that. If he like regrets it or does it, I don't know. But I, Hulk was actually, I think, a better choice because it was so shocking. It created him. See, everybody had to start changing their gimmicks. Yeah. I think it gave Sting a whole new attitude of outfit, face paint, but. And, and every time he, you know, remember, he never, how many times you've ever seen Sting laugh or smile? Never, right? No. Mm-hmm. Every time we come out, I keep in mind, it was one of his best friends was me. I'd come out of the ring as NWO and I'd be going, ooh. <laughs> it's Big Bad Sting with his back. Ooh. If you ever look back at his show and you ever see this right here. That sting going up to his mouth to hide his laughing at me. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have to go back and watch some of these episodes. 100% shoot. All he would do is be standing there like this. I'd be doing the... We're scared of sting. <laughs> fuck with him like that. And he, he just go... <laughs> and he'd go a little bit. And he'd come yeah. back down with the... You know, yeah, yeah. And I'd stand there going... <laughs> I, ooh, you're so scary. What are you going to do next? You know, <laughs> and it just fucking was great. Everybody's like, because that's what's so great about being a heel is you can do anything you want to fucking do, bro. It's yeah, anything. And Ric Flair proved that way beyond all that. And then Hogan and them just elaborated on it, you know, and all you guys. But like you said, I totally agree. Like for WCW, like that, that was, and it was weird because Hogan went heel, right? But then it alienated Sting, you know, as the story goes and all that. Well, and he wasn't actually, really a heel, but that was he was a, he wasn't the Sting we all knew, you know. No, that was that time where neon blonde hair, spiked up baby face. Thing. That was a huge turn. Yeah, yeah. Woo, you know, it wasn't that Sting no more. You know, he was the fucking buzzard. The he didn't the, talk for a year. Raptors, you know, and we're black and 
dreary and crow like, you know. Thanks to crow-like. Scott Hall. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, it really, it really made it's keep in mind there's always got to be a bad guy. Always. So if we're if everybody's digging us, who are they gonna hate? They started hating the WCW guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your DDPs, your your yep. things, Jericho. Your, your that whole that whole crew had to fucking regroup because now we're we've tried to be heels and didn't win. And we became huge over. I remember seeing the whole fucking the whole floor used to be, you know, half women <clears throat> to the whole fucking floor was all dudes with NWO yeah. show. And it was cool. And it was yep. and most of you, you let us watch the fucking replay at 10 o'clock and happen to get to the Marriott in time to watch it with the fans. Do you know how cool it is to watch yourself on live fucking TV? Hell yeah. It's real fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clip. <laughs> yeah. It was so fucking cool that it was okay and it wasn't stupid to watch it with your fans. They're like, they're they're allowing you to fucking watch the show with them because it was actually a fucking great show, bro. Yes, it was. My wife, about two weeks ago, I swear to God on my life, my wife, my third wife, who's my ex-wife, two weeks ago called me up. She went, you got a few minutes? It was late one night. I was like, yeah, what's going on? She goes, "Um, because we're actually still wearing clothes. And she said, "How? what the fuck happened with WCW? And I was like, whoa, what, 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 are, you, what, what are you going? And she goes, Betra, which is our neighbor of ours, she goes, Betra was watching a YouTube thing showing her family who her neighbor used to be, which is Buff Bagwell. And and she said she was so she called up Judy to ask her something about how to how to get to YouTube and what she was doing or something. So Judy, my third wife, my third wife's name was exactly like my mother's. I know I was just gonna say <laughs> Judy Ann Bagwell, same middle name too. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. Oh my god. I swear to God, dude. Judy Ann Bagwell, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and they fucking hated each other. <laughs> No. Well, yeah, they're both like, hey, gimmick infringement. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, gimmick with infringement rights. But um, um, uh, she called me and she goes, I just watched. So when she turned it over to show her how to get to it, she said the next thing she knew, an hour and a half had gone by. And she laughed and cut up with herself watching me on TV with Nash Hall and all the NWO guys. She goes, she goes, I mean, how did they fuck that up? I said, baby, we've been talking, we've been asking that question for 20 years. <laughs> I said, we know I got fucked when I wrestled Booker into in Tacoma. Yeah. And I do, I will go into that real quick because I, I actually just rewatched it back again today and I got something to say about the fuck it. We'll go into it right now, but keep that in mind because I want to circle back. That is not a bad match. No, that's Thank a match you, of fuck. Not I watched all. it back. There ain't a fucking step off. There nope. ain't a punch miss. There's not a clothesline not so correctly. There's not a damn thing wrong with that match. And it's just a bunch of shit. There's things that you guys know I'm getting ready to tell you right now that you don't fucking know until I'll tell you that's off the fucking chain. But one of them, you may know, I'm not sure. Do you know where the next week uh, was at then after Tacoma? Uh... <sighs> Hmm. Yeah, it was in Georgia, wasn't it? Atlanta. Yeah, it was in Atlanta. That was the thing, and that's what now, I was going to say. You, motherfucker, if you're Vince McMahon, are you going to do the fucking first match of the invasion, you're calling it? Are yeah. you going to do it 5,000 miles away, or are you going to do it in Ted Turner's back fucking yard? Yes, yes. Yep. I think Tony Khan would book that now, but, you know, well, not we, Vince McMahon. We knew in Tacoma we were fucked, you know? Oh, yeah. Because it wasn't – you guys were never, like – you know, WCW wasn't huge there. That was, that wasn't your guys's backyard. No, you know, no, we've never been there ever. We've been they're to probably like, and, and so they're home. jumping, they're jumping on the train too. Cause at the time it was much like TNA had late in later years. Um, it just had the hatred from the community. Cause oh, I mean, yeah. for a long time, the product my, was bad. My music, my music comes on and I go to just do the curtain. It's kind of there before you go through the walkway to go to the right where the babies come out. 
Right. And, and, and I did the curtain. Right when I go to do the curtain, my music's already playing. I get a hand right here on my shoulder, and it's Shane McMahon. He goes, I forgot to tell you, which when you hear the rest of the story, he didn't forget nothing. He timed it out. But he goes, I forgot to tell you, you can't look at the camera. What? No went, hard cam? I said, wait a minute. Bro, have you ever seen me fucking wrestle? <laughs> I said, that's all I do is look in the camera. Uh-oh. Want to hear more? Stay tuned to next week's part two interview with Marcus Buff Bagwell. Sorry for the cliffhanger. Hear the rest of the story and a bunch of other stories next week. Thanks for listening. You gonna do sex to me? Did you like that video? If so, be sure to hit like and subscribe and check out more killer content from your boys at Juice Pro Wrestling. Whoa, yeah!